wrong side of the table, it's still perfect. We have Team USA. On the negative side, we have Team Uganda. Moving on to the actual impacts of mitigating brain drain. 
Basically, people are going to build an infrastructure if they were to go back into their own countries. This buildup of infrastructure means that they can be educated in their home countries, meaning they won't necessarily need to migrate to a different country to get this education, which means there are net benefits in the world after having this four-year policy, because most people are going to be going to the US or you know, Western parts of Europe or any other sort of you know, very uh, affluent countries, they're not going to be putting burdens on their resources. They're going to have their own sustainable country, which is clearly benefiting the country of origin. Second, we like to say that you're going to be improving ties by having, this is another advantage, the second advantage, you're going to be improving ties between the country of origin and between the actual country that they're going to. So there are two types of ties that are going to be, you know, basically enhanced. First is going to be the spread of knowledge. Because people are being educated in a different state, they're going to have education that may not have been possible in their original state, meaning you're going to spread different knowledges. And basically what happens currently without this kind of policy is places like the US have basic monopolies over the patent rights of different products. Because countries have massive organizations that can control and pretty much regulate all of the patents in the world, other countries don't have the ability to develop anything. So these patent rights are clearly going to, you know, at least be minimized in these countries that have current monopolies if we were to have a four-year plan. And second, culture acceptance is going to clearly go up. If you have people going to one country, going back to the other country, and spreading the potential culture, they will have accumulated over their education process. So moving on to the third and final benefit. A program of compensation will most likely allow people that would have had the choice to go back to their own country the actual ability to do so. Someone that's moving from a very poor country to you know, any sort of European country to get uh, education may not be able to go back to their original country, even if they want to help them. But if you have a system of compensation, a system like the Peace Corps where they can help them get back, this sanctioning of their movement backwards is going to help them do exactly what they want to do, which links right back into the benefits, the first and second that we had previously outlined. For all these reasons, we urge you to affirm. Thank you. Every 100 people. 100,000. 100,000 people. Yeah. So I can tell us that 
every Malawian who is studying abroad in those countries is studying medicine. No, but what we're saying is that when you do start this policy, start having people go back, that will help alleviate problems such as... So how do you justify your statement by saying if you allow this policy, people in Malawi are not going to die because to us, you're assuming every Malawian studying in a both country is studying medicine or... No, no, that was an example of a problem that can be alleviated. We're not saying that problem will intrinsically be solved by our plan because our plan is not... See, I'm just saying eliminated. I'm just saying problem is eliminated. Did you just say problems no. will be eliminated? No, 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 like, you can't help them. You can't help that situation intrinsically. Like, you, our plan is not is not that specific. We're not saying everyone is going to study medicine. They're all going to practice a lot. Okay. What we're okay. saying is that that's an example of some of the injustices okay. that are happening. Right? That, that's, that's just right, that's just right. You talked about, uh, in your case, that your plan is a four-year plan. Did you? Well, you wanted to go back for four years. Well, four years is what's necessary in the actual resolution, but it's four years for more, so it's at least four years. So, what if... Don't you think four years for some people is just quite the short thing to bring development? Sorry. If I don't encourage them to go at least for four years, don't you think a person will go to this country for only four years will do almost nothing to the country? Well, then you could just say, okay, then they should go for eight years. Regardless, the statement that only that four years should happen is still true. If you also affirm eight years should happen, that's still like the both true. But one is just going to be more. Better, but you can have both at the same time. You talked about brain drain. How do you define brain drain? Brain drain is when anyone is giving up their talents, giving up the ability to share their talents with their own country and moving to a country that already Don't you think it's more important to support the country that has given you education than to a country that has not given you education? To me, that's brain drain. You're removing the knowledge given to you from a country to so a country that has not given you education. The countries that can give education are the ones that are already rich. Why should they get rich? So, so no, you, you should not support the country that's giving you education. You go down with me that... You country that doesn't have that ability. So do you go down with me that brain drain is uh, actually moving knowledge from a country that has given it to you to a country that has not given you that no, that knowledge. Because they taught it to you, so clearly you're not removing it from them. So no, so, if you teach someone to be a doctor, they clearly are capable of being a doctor themselves. They just taught you how to be a doctor. If you go back to your own country who doesn't have that ability, you're helping your own doctor. Trying to assert 
that Malawi is suffering this situation simply because they have no doctors? Are there hospitals in Malawi without doctors? Let us ask ourselves these questions. Whether all the Malawi people who are studying medicine go back to Malawi, do they have where to study? Yes, that shall bring us to their point of development. <coughs> they are talking of four years. Four years or eight years. In his speech, he clearly stated four years. It is not possible. Yes, it may be if you're some super kind of being, but it is practically not possible for you to develop an economy in four years. We ask them if one needs to be present in his country in order to facilitate development. <coughs> they say not necessary, which leaves us with the benefit of doubt. They came up and talked for a second culture acceptance. Ladies and gentlemen, consider the fact that you've moved into a host country. You've lived there and adopted a culture. You're going to go back to your country of origin, sorry, and look at this culture as alien. You're not going to be able to link two separate cultures. A case in point, let me give you a long example in Uganda. If you go and migrate to Karamoja, they eat blood. If you come back to the lower side of Kampala, they eat matoki. How are you going to harmonize these two, honestly? Anyway, those were the trivial issues in their case. Let me go to ours. They define should as a very good one. Graduation, however, we strongly believe that graduating is the act of one person excelling or succeeding through a level, a given level of education. Currently, majority of the people living in most countries do not go back to their country of origin as stated by the International Organization for Migration. So, we, in our plan, are going to show you first and foremost why they should not go back. Secondly, why they should stay in their host countries. Thirdly, we shall suggest what we think should be done. <coughs> so, it's in that. Why shouldn't they go back? Ladies and gentlemen, developing countries and developed countries. There is a technological gap. How is this going to be suited? You're going to come back, let me say, from the United States of America and go down to Malawi and you cannot access the kind of technology you need to perform your given profession. What is the point in you going back, yet you can use your brain and expertise in the country in which you are? Second, <coughs> educational differences. The, the curriculums in the different countries differ. You cannot tell me that the curriculum in the United States of America is similar to the curriculum in any given developing nation. How are you going to harmonize the two? Thirdly, it shall be simple exploitation of the host company. Imagine you are a person. You accept someone into your home. All he does, come, eat, and run away. How would you feel? Betrayed. Let's think of it. It is being selfish. Selfish and selfish. So, why should they stay? They need to contribute to their host nation and pay allegiance to the nation that has kept them and given them accommodation and whatever it is, given them a hosting hand and a welcoming hand. What else? They need to stay there because of the differences in the way of life, the standard of living, and the cost of living is it fast. Developing countries are developed countries. So what do we as the negative suggest? It is better off if these people send money back to their developing countries. Since money is the main thing that steers development. So we noted that clearly most of the underdeveloped countries are not developed simply because they do not have funds, not because they do not have expertise. Take the example of Uganda, Dr. King is a cardiologist. Where is he? In Australia. Does the National Reform Hospital have cardiology? No, it doesn't. Think about that.
Thank you. 
But second, there's no clear exploitation. I would say that there's already a benefit because these people have gone to these nations and they've already made sure that they shared their ideas with universities, so there's already some sort of benefit, and it's not like they're stealing anything away from those countries. Lastly, let's talk about remittances. I've already answered the remittances argument, but I'd also like to mention that there's no reason why these two are mutually exclusive. People can still send remittances home. Remember, the plan only requires that they go back for four years. They can send back remittances for the rest of their lives, hopefully, which will be pretty long. So there's no reason that you are mutually exclusive very quickly.
even if I send my money on the most of the time. In other words, they are still building of tanks. They talk about culture accept. Um, they talk about culture accept. We talk about culture acceptance. We we put a guard on the culture acceptance. The fact is, you have come before the eyes. You have come from a region where you're not used to a specific culture. You have come before the eyes. You want to develop. You want to you want to build infrastructure. You want to bring about development. On top of that, you do not. You're not used to that culture. It will take you like almost a whole year to get adjusted to that culture. Then what will be the temple that you build? That's the number of the cost of that Therefore, dear audience, judges, and all people in this room, following that poverty case is very dangerous. Why do we say as the leaders that they should not go? We say they should not go because of the difference in technology. We get, and we, I gave an example of Dr. Kikenji. He was he is a Ugandan, posted in cardiology in the United States of America. He came back to Uganda, so sad. We did not have the instruments to practice cardiology. What is the use of him studying cardiology coming back to Uganda and there are no instructions in the hospitals to practice cardiology? You can't tell that only he is going to find the building or the construction of all those instruments, which is one person. And now he had to go back to where it's more beneficial. He's now the personal doctor of the Prime Minister of, of Australia. That's a complete example. Difference in education curriculum was our second hand. Promise you, in Uganda, I'm giving an example. In Uganda, our education curriculum is practically different from that in the United States of America. If you study law in the United States of America, you can't come and practice that law in Uganda. There is a difference in the laws. There is a difference in the way it's established. The law in Uganda is different from the law in the United States of America. So if you come as a lawyer from the United States of America and come to Uganda, from your suit, it's going to be very useless because your profession will not be valuable to us. So, what is the use of coming and suffering an employment? Yet you can stay in a country and be employed. And um, yeah, we are saying that they should stay because we believe that they should pay back to the host country. Because most people who are studying in outside countries are actually being given scholarships by the host countries. Let them stay there and develop those countries which are hosting them. And we stated that our alternative is to send money to the developing <coughs> countries because we believe that money is a necessity, not the presence of a person being the necessity. It's the money that is, is, that is necessary to the development. We give an example that in the United States of America, according to the Central, uh, sorry, according to the Center for Immigration Studies, it is ten billion, um, ten billion dollars that is given to the American government and um, economy by the American workers there. But also, if you go back to Uganda, seven to nine billion dollars is contributed to the Uganda economy by the people working in outside countries sending money there. Therefore, if they stay there but send money, we are hitting two stones. We are hitting, we are hitting one bad. I mean, we are hitting two bad with one stone. Sorry, we are hitting one. Two, um, Two birds, two birds, two birds. Yeah, so there will be improvement in the economy in the host country and also improvement in the economy in the, in the other country, that development country. Therefore, we believe that we should stay with us because their values and our plan is much more profitable. Doctors in Uganda, they are they can also do as doctors. It doesn't 
system and made that a person from the United States right. of America who is educated is going to come and be that doctor. There are also so, people in that country who are so talking and also be doctors there, but they're not really doctors. All right. Cool. So let's move on to the whole four years. Right? You say that we have to have four years and only four years, and that's not sufficient to develop anything. Is that what you're saying? I don't think it is sufficient enough to give us an effective degree. Right, so at least four years. So four years to infinity years, that's not enough time. I didn't say much Why are you burdening us with only four years? The resolution because is at least saying. four years. No, 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 four years. no, 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 at least four years. Okay, so say we said that. So yeah, at least four years, does at least four years have that? You didn't say for at least four years. Okay, okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. All right, cool. So then you say that these poorer countries, if they get money, will immediately have this infrastructure. Who are we giving the money to? We believe that the education is in those countries. Because even those countries have, have also schools, they have people. universities also in those other developed countries. So we believe that those universities, those so how is this money? Because people can also work in those countries. How do you present the money? The people who are also in the country who are educated, who present okay. the money. So how do you prove that this money doesn't exist in our world? Where are you getting the money from? You did tell us that it exists. You may right. specify that fact. Because we're talking about the you resolution, may. and you're saying that well, there's no money if you. I am. But I why can't we also have your I plan? Why can't both go together? I am refusing what you say exactly. You may you specify just, the need. For the educated people to go back, you didn't specify the need for them to go back and give money. But I mean, you didn't specify the need for them to give money, you specified the need for them right. to go back. Right. What is the use of presence without the necessity?
five minutes to prove our case. Be fair. We don't know what's going on here. So essentially, the benefits and 
across. We have ex um, excessive brain drain in the country of origin. We have these people who, although they may be getting some remittances sent home, have no way to access health care, access you know, these educated professionals. Whereas in the affirmative world, we're providing a way for these professionals to return to their countries with money, with resources, link the two countries together. And for these reasons, I would urge you to confirm this resolution today. Now, if you're encouraging people to go to their countries of origin, will they be sending? 
Because I'm from South Africa. They are not doing it to go to South Africa. Let me say you don't only from saying you're in South Africa. So yeah, on that case, they are confusing us. Because you're saying you're not stopping people from sending money, which means you're saying they can stay back and send money, supporting our case, our judges. And why do we believe that they can give as well as case? Number one, we showed you how, why they should stay in their home, in the host countries. Number one, why they should, why they should stay in their host countries is because we believe they need to pay back. A country has given you education, a country has given you all these facilities, we believe it is time to pay back. Not just carrying all the knowledge and the happiness and flying out of the nation. Number two, we believe if you stay in that country, you're going to have better working conditions. We give examples of technological differences. If perhaps you study astronomy and perhaps you're from Malawi, you cannot go to Malawi and do astronomy. You cannot. Because of these very fundamental issues, we believe it is not necessary at times to travel to your own country. Number two, number, number three, we see that this is the highest level of exploitation. We give examples of America, how the migrants in America are contributing significantly to the economy. But now if you're encouraging them to move away, $10 billion per year will be lost because you are encouraging them to live. And that is the highest level of expectation. Our guests here, our dear judges, chose it to one fundamental basis, one fundamental problem. You do not have to be in your country to cause development in that country. That's why we are saying, send funds to your country. Give them that financial support that is the most needed. Your brains will do nothing. And with this, our dear judges, we believe the host country shall benefit. And, the, and your home country, your country of origin, shall also benefit. Our dear judges, with these views from the negative view, we believe our case can also be made. Thank you. Please try to move out fast.